So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Smith. Um, I teach in the Department of Historic Preservation, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about our program here at Mary Wash. Um, this presentation should take, I don't know, oh, 20 minutes, half an hour, depends. It depends a lot on how much, uh, how many questions you guys have. And at the end, we'll have plenty of time uh, for more questions as well. So, hopefully the slide move forward. If I can get a yes from someone, that would be very helpful, but otherwise I will assume they work. Thank you very much, Madison. Uh, so, uh, who are we? Um, uh, Historic Preservation at Mary Wash consists of six full-time faculty. Uh, we are super, super engaged in the community, which I'll talk about at length uh, in this presentation, but we all live either in town in Historic Fredericksburg itself or right across the river. Uh, you will run into us on weekends and at the supermarket um, and all that. Uh, we have about 120 majors at any given time. This of course fluctuates a little bit, but um, yeah, we're a pretty strong uh, community. And uh, there are four areas of focus in the major, uh, building documentation, urban planning, museum studies, and archeology. span um, I'll be talking about all of these uh, uh, as we go, but just a heads up, you have to do all four. If, you, um, if you're a major, you gotta do all four. You specialize in one, but you gotta learn a little bit about all four of them. Uh, as of right now, I believe there are only six undergraduate historic preservation programs uh, in the country. Uh, although actually we might be down to five. Um, we are the oldest program in historic preservation at the undergraduate level in the country. We are the largest by quite a bit, actually. Most of them are like maybe 10 students at a time. Um, and I would argue we're the best. Now, listen, Mary Washington is known as a, as a, I think, good liberal arts school regionally. But in most disciplines, if you leave the DC region, the, the um, uh, Virginia area, um, you know, people might be like Martha Washington, you know, they don't know. Uh, in historic preservation, that's not the case. In historic preservation, we're the best program in the country. And that's really visible in, um, you know, when I go to conferences, I meet alums all the time. They work um, for every major museum in the United States, every major historic site in the United States, lots of cities in the United States. Um, so that's, uh, it's really rewarding um, to be, I think, part of a, a really, really elite program. All right. So I'm gonna talk about our four areas of study, um, the minors that we have available here on campus that are associated with the major. Uh, we'll talk about field courses and study abroad, our resources and facilities, our scholarships, and then finally our career uh, prospects for um, majors. So uh, the four sub uh, disciplines in historic preservation are first building documentation. So if you major in historic preservation, you will be taught uh, how to document a building. So that means uh, doing deed research. We have very, very good relationship with the city uh, and also with the neighboring counties. Uh, you will learn how to draw, how to measure a building. Uh, and then if you want to, there are uh, options to really go very advanced with this stuff. So we have, I think like 20 VR headsets to do um, 3D imaging of historic sites. We have a total station which is like $25,000 to allow for documentation of sites. We have so many technical toys. We can teach you how to use them. Uh, full disclosure, this is not at all my field. So I can tell you about it, but that's not, that's not really what I do. Um, but you will at the very least learn how to document buildings uh, because that's a core aspect of historic preservation is, well, protecting our built environment. So you need to know how to document it. Uh, urban planning. So that's my, uh, that's my bailiwick. Uh, urban planning is also a major part of historic preservation. So you will take at least one course in uh, urban planning and learn how to do things like survey um, and learn how uh, planning uh, works with historic preservation. Uh, in fact, right now my lab, my senior lab is working with the city to uh, update the brochures for the historic district. So the work of the students is gonna go right to use with the city, which is really neat. Uh, Archaeology uh, with Dr. McMillan. Uh, she and uh, uh, Professor Spencer are both alums, by the way, of this program. I think we have the highest percentage of faculty who are alums. Um, 
So uh, the, uh, she uh, teaches all the archaeology uh, classes. We focus on American archaeology in the department. Uh, the anthro department, I believe, also has archaeology courses, but they focus more on world archaeology. So if you're interested in archaeology in the United States, um, then we're really the place to be. Dr. McMillan uh, focuses specifically on um, local sites, and she has particularly uh, excellent relationships with um, a number of Native American tribes in the area and does a lot of work with them, which is really neat. Uh, and finally, museum studies. Um, so uh, again, every museum in this area uh, works directly with Dr. Terdian, who's the, the head of museum studies here. Uh, so you'll learn how to um, catalog uh, uh, art artifacts, um, how to um, set up displays, that kind of stuff. Um, that's all part of class as well. And there's tons of opportunities for internships, which I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, associated minors. Uh, there is a museum studies minor. Um, it is very large. So I I think we have about 50 or maybe 60 students in the, in the museum studies minor. Most of them are from historic preservation, but not all. Some of them are in uh, art history or some of them are in um, studio art. Um, and then there are a few outliers who are in other, um, in other uh, majors. Um, we also have an urban studies minor. Um, that one also has, I think mostly historic preservation, but also a lot of geography students. Um, Lots of students also double major. Uh, there's a GIS certificate uh, if you're interested in that. That's a mapping software uh, that's available. Um, and uh, there's also the honors uh, program. I don't know if any of you are, are um, going to be part of that, but if you are, we get lots of students from honors uh, in historic preservation as well. Right, field course and study abroad. Unfortunately, uh, COVID has uh, derailed a lot of our efforts uh, this past year, but usually um, on alternating years, there's the archeology span field school on even years, uh, which is uh, locally uh, somewhere around here, close, close to campus, um, so that students can get their uh, hours in to become an archeologist. Um, and on odd years, I take students to Paris for a month in, um, July. Uh, obviously, I had to cancel this summer, uh, so I'm probably going to do it two years in a row instead of um, instead of not going. Um, I I am from France. I'm actually um, yeah, I'm French. So uh, and notice the shirt. Um, so for me, it's also an opportunity to see my family, um, uh, and you know, mostly so they can see their grandkids. They don't really care about me anymore. And um, uh, the course is not taught in French, though. I teach the course in English. Uh, so most students don't speak French at all, and that's fine. Um, right. Any questions so far? Nothing. All right. Well, if anything pops up, please uh, let me know in the chat box. Otherwise, I'm going to be done really quickly. Uh, all right. Um, in terms of resources, we have a lot here. Uh, this is this is a dream place to work, can I just tell you. Uh, so first of all, we have the Center for Historic Preservation. Uh, the center is um, kind of the research and outreach arm of the department. Uh, it does all sorts of activities, sponsors all sorts of activities. For instance, we're having a job fair uh, for seniors next week. Um, in the fall, we have a grad school fair, same thing. Um, so tons of lectures. Uh, we also sponsor students to go to conferences. So when uh, conferences like the National Trust for Historic Preservation happen. Usually we take up to a dozen students um, and, and subsidize part of their trip. Um, and, uh, uh, uh oh, you're stuck. All right, let me see if I can reopen this. Okay. Stop share. Sorry about this, you guys. This is like a constant headache. <laughs> uh, if I never ever have to do Zoom again, it will be too soon. All right. Uh, no, that's not right. That's not right. Yep, let's try that. Can you see the slide? Uh, there should be someone uh, uh, very pale blonde hammering on an anvil. No, great, that's just super fun. 
All right, let me try it again. I'm just gonna. <sighs> it's no biggie, we'll fix it. All right, how about now? Awesome. Now I need to figure out how to see this and the screen share at the same time. Okay, here we go. All right, so uh, the center, um, right, does uh, workshops and lectures. Um, we've done tons of really cool stuff over the years. Uh, at one time we did, um, uh, we raised a, a miniature barn just over one day. That was really fun. Uh, one year we learned how to do flint napping and trying to um, uh, make a fire like the way uh, Native Americans were, uh, would. Uh, I failed spectacularly and just smelled like smoke for the next two days. I did shower, but like, man, that smell just sticks with you. Um, uh, we also sponsored the uh, National Historic Preservation Book Prize every year, um, which is the most well-recognized uh, book prize in the country for historic preservation. So we get to read um, all the best new books uh, we get to keep a copy for our library, which is wonderful. And uh, one student uh, every year is the Knight Fellow. So they actually, that part of their fellowship is actually to read and then to judge those books too. The person at the top boxing um, those, um, those books, uh, her name is Lily. Uh, she uh, was the Knight Fellow maybe two years ago, three years ago. Uh, and actually she works for the city now in the tourism office. So that's pretty cool. Uh, resources. Wow, do we have awesome resources. It's too bad you're not seeing this place in person, but that's okay. Uh, we, uh, we have basically the half the first floor and most of the basement of Combs Hall. Uh, historic preservation is always, always in a basement. I'm just happy my office isn't in one. Um, so first for me. Um, Anyway, uh, we have a computer lab, which you see uh, in, the, in the big picture. We have 14 stations in the computer lab. Uh, they all have all sorts of awesome software. Of course, Creative Cloud, uh, GIS, AutoCAD, SketchUp. Um, they're, they're pretty good computers because we need them to be able to do a lot of graphical work. Um, we also have a plotter, which is a, um, a large format printer. You can see, actually see it in the corner of that picture. In every other institution I've been to, those are kept behind lock and key, uh, but not here. So here, any student, uh, any major can just, you know, go up and print in, in large format. And it's just all on the honor system. We also have an archaeology lab, including a wet lab and a dry lab uh, for cleaning artifacts. We have a ton of artifacts on site. Um, we have um, a uh, building uh, components library as well. So, you know, when we teach you about bricks, we have all sorts of examples of bricks. When we teach you about nails, we've got nails, you know, cut nails, extruded nails, rosehead nails. Um, basically, whenever any building gets torn down in, in town, because, you know, we've been here forever, uh, we get a phone call and then we go and we check and see if anything's worth um, keeping. Uh, so we have examples of just about everything, uh, which is really, really nice. So when we teach you about items, you, you learn from that item itself. You get to touch it. Um, you get to, you know, scratch it and whatever. Um, we have also um, uh, a bunch of um, uh, microscopes, uh, stereo microscopes. Um, yeah, uh, all that stuff. And you know, as urban planner, I don't get to play with a lot of those toys, which is unfortunate. But um, what I do have is a very large library of Lego. Um, we have about five thousand dollars worth of Lego. Actually, well, maybe closer to ten thousand now, um, which we've collected over the years. Um, which my students use a lot when we, uh, when I teach urban design, for instance, uh, so they can model in three D, even if they don't have uh, experience modeling. Uh, you know, you might not know how to use foam core and exacto knives, plus you might cut yourself, but you know, everybody knows how to use Lego. So um, I often uh, lend out uh, just, you know, Lego sets uh, to students so they can uh, model their work. Uh, right. We also have a very smelly van. <laughs> I know. Uh, probably shouldn't say that too much. All right. Uh, in terms of equipment that we can lend out to students, in addition to the Lego, we have an equipment library. Again, it works on the honor system. So uh, this is Mary Wash. We live 
we live by the honor system here. Uh, so if you wanna borrow a, a DSLR camera, that's a very fancy uh, single reflex lens uh, camera, um, go right ahead. Uh, we have a bunch of them. We have uh, large format um, clipboards, molding combs, measuring tapes, tripods, measuring poles, hard hats, whatever. All the, all the equipment you need to do work in the field, we have it. Um, and you can just borrow it whenever you want, um, which is uh, again, really, really nice. So we don't expect you to own any of this stuff. We don't expect you to know how to use any of this stuff when you start. Again, that's, that's our job to teach you how to use it. Uh, scholarships. Um, I think the slide is out of date. I think we have 23 scholarships now. Um, we have more scholarships than I think any other department on campus. And we give out more scholarship money per student than any other department on campus, I think, except maybe music. Um, anyway, we have 23 scholarships uh, totaling about $80,000, maybe more, um, it fluctuates. Um, but uh, those scholarships vary from like, I think the, the smallest one is like $500 and the largest one is 8,000. Um, so um, they're merit-based. Um, and so usually you have to be a major in order to qualify for them. Um, but we give them out every single year. So it's a great resource, especially for upperclassmen. Um, we also have senior awards, uh, which don't have a monetary value, but you do get a book. So that's something and a plaque. Um, here's a graduating picture from a few years ago. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So a few alums, uh, to highlight, just to show you the kinds of jobs that, um, that alums do. Uh, so Diana Inthavong, uh, she now works for, uh, uh, Fairfax County Parks. She went to Clemson for her master's. Um, we have a lot of students who end up going there. Um, one, uh, professor who used to work here then went over there as well. So we have very good relationships with them. Uh, Courtney, uh, works at the, uh, National Museum of the Marine Corps. Any museum around here? is just absolutely populated by UMW grads. Uh, in fact, when the um, uh, National Museum of African-American History opened a couple years ago, I think, like nobody could get in. And uh, I got to skip the line because one of my students was an intern there. <laughs> so I got to go <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was pretty amazing. Uh, Chris Waring uh, is at, actually, I think he just left Montpelier for another job, but, um, but he was at Montpelier, which is another historic site right here. Um, it's maybe 50 miles away. Uh, uh, Carrie Pfaff, um, who graduated pretty recently in, in 2019, um, uh, is a docent at the 9-11 uh, Museum in, DC, in uh, New York. Uh, Michelle Martz, who I've never heard herself talk, she calls herself Bubba. Uh, she um, works at Lincoln's Cottage. She's been there for a long time now. Um, and Danny Mesplay is the um, Senior Zoning and Development Manager in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So you can see it, it really ranges. I mean, the students um, graduate, a lot of them go on to master's degrees, though not all. And um, uh, many of them end up, you know, kind of staying in the East Coast, um, but uh, they kind of, yeah, they, uh, they go in uh, preservation itself and planning in museums and archaeology, you name it, um, there, uh, there are uh, in all of our subdisciplines. I think that's pretty much it for my presentation. Um, my email is there. It's alsmith at umw.edu. Um, you're certainly welcome to uh, ask me any questions after tonight if you have any. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, as you can see, I'm in my office right now. I, would have tried to do this at home, except number one, my internet's not very good. And number two, my kids would have 100% interrupted. Uh, but that does mean that, you know, if you wanna see, you know, the, the department, I can like run down and take a picture. It's really not hard. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've got. So please ask your questions if you have any, I would love to hear them or read them. please. Favorite part about the program. Okay. Uh, what's my favorite part about the program? Well, I mean, 
of course, I, you know, I get to teach, right? I've been here, I know I look relatively young. I'd like to think I look relatively young, but um, I've been here a long time. I've been teaching at Mary Wash since uh, 2008, 2009. Um, uh, the thing that's amazing is that, you know, I, I get to see, you know, students discover a passion for preservation. Many of them don't come to Mary Wash because they love preservation and certainly not planning. I, I really feel like nobody who's 18 years old is like, oh my gosh, I wanna be a planner. <laughs> um, and seeing them go from not really knowing what they want to discovering their passion, to applying that passion and um, you know, becoming professionals and well-respected professionals, uh, it's, it's just an absolutely wonderful feeling. Um, and it really, um, it's very, very rewarding. So I, I, I love it very much. Field school. Uh, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm not an archaeologist, and bugs are not my jam. Uh, I'm a city person, so yeah, I guess cockroaches, but like like country type bugs, this is not this is not for me. Um, field school is a lot of sunburns, <laughs> as far as I can tell. I'm being mean. Um, all right. Uh, usually, uh, students I think live on site uh, with the field school. Um, it's a lot of digging. I mean, it's, it's doing the, the, the work of an archaeologist. Um, I also, uh, again, I'm not an archaeologist, so I want to preface it that way, but uh, from what I understand, you need to have a certain number of hours under your belt at a site in order to be an archaeologist. And so um, Dr. McMillan is absolutely on top of this stuff. She knows, she knows all of this stuff. So if you'd like to learn more about the field school, I would suggest that you um, get in touch with her. Um, she, uh, as I said, she's also an, uh, an alum of the program. She's also, um, the head of the pipe band. So she plays the bagpipes, uh, which is amazing. Uh, right. Uh, in the past, the field school has been at a number of different local sites. Um, a lot of, I mean, Fredericksburg's so historic, it's not hard to find them around here. Um, so that's, that's really nice. And as I said, it's usually even numbered years. So, there wasn't a field school plan for this year anyway. The field school is gonna be in um, uh, 2022. Also, if you're interested in doing the study abroad and the field school, they're not taught at the same time. The field school is May to June and uh, Paris is always the month of July. So um, if you wanna do both, plenty of students have done both in the past. Okay, next, uh, next question. What kind of internships are open for historic preservation majors? Um, Lots of internships. Uh, so it depends on if you're local or not. If you're local here in Fredericksburg, uh, as you can imagine, we have very strong relationships with every museum in town. Uh, the planning office, um, the um, George Washington Regional Commission, FAMPO, which is the transportation. Um, uh, every, everything that happens within a 50 mile radius of here, you know, they're all in touch with us. So interns for those organizations are pretty much always uh, majors. Um, and uh, the, uh, if, you want, if you live further away, um, there are lots of internship opportunities uh, through uh, national organizations like the National Council for Preservation Education. Full disclosure, I'm on the board of that uh, organization. Um, uh, through um, the National Park Service, um, most of these are paid and paid pretty well because with, they're with the federal government. Um, what else can I say about that? I mean, the thing with historic preservation is we're kind of a weird field in that there's technical aspects, there's, there's knowledge aspects, and you have to have both to be able to, you know, do the work. So, uh, you know, undergraduate students who have those skills are rare. So generally it's not hard for them to find internships. Um, we tend to help students uh, into internships. And if you're a museum studies minor, an internship is required. And um, Dr. Tredean usually helps students uh, get placed in internships for that. All right, work study opportunities. Uh, yes, there are work study opportunities. Uh, we have usually two to three, three student aides at any given point, it might be four. One of them is usually an archeologist and then two with the department. Uh, also the Knight Fellow um, who does work with the center. Um, they, you know, uh, we choose them uh, every year um, unless somebody has to leave, you know, middle of the, sem uh, of the year because they graduate in December or something. Um, so yes, there are work study opportunities. 
uh, through the department and uh, students can choose their hours. So it's not, um, it's not too hard to do, uh, to balance that with classwork usually. Um, do you learn the science behind how the tools work? Very good question. I think um, it depends on if you want to. <laughs> so uh, if you just uh, if you just uh, learn how to measure buildings, you know you're just going to do it with pen uh, pen and paper, and you know you don't have to take uh, the um, technologies class. Uh, but if you do decide to take the technologies class, yeah, you got to learn how they work. Um, and certainly for building materials, you got to learn how those work. I mean, there's no you, you can't learn about buildings without understanding how bricks work or how, uh, you know, how moist uh, wood can be before it rots. It's 19%. Um, or, you know, whatever, things like that. You, you gotta know that stuff. Um, so, you know, we're, I would say we're, we're pretty solidly in the social sciences. I mean, there's certainly historic aspects to what we do. Obviously we're historic preservation. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of technical aspects to what we do as well. Any other questions? I don't, I don't see anything yet, but I'm gonna give everyone a minute in case there's more. Um, and I have an email, I just wanna make sure it's nothing urgent. So if you'll just give me a second. Oh. Hey, okay. Aha, my student who was gonna show up, I think she might not have the right code to get in. So, or I, at least I don't, I don't see her. Um, so let me send her a response so she can get in as well. Is my link the right link? Uh, -huh. If you just give me a second, everybody, that way you can ask a question of an actual student instead of just me. So um, I think that might be helpful. One second. Too many things on my screen. Okay. All right, I'll give her a minute, see if she can log on. Uh, and otherwise, do I see any other questions? Oh, wait, I can't see the questions at all now. Have I mentioned how much I dislike Zoom, y'all? It's not my favorite. Chat. All righty. Oh, there she is. Hey, Cosette. Thanks for coming. Hi, sorry, I think I had the wrong link. I love how we match. That was uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, uh, you're a rising senior already? Dear Lord. Yep. Okay, yeah. uh, do you mind introducing yourself real quick? Uh, sure, sure. Um, I'm Cosette. Um, I'm a rising senior in the preser historic preservation major and I'm also minoring in museum studies. Um, and I am from Hyde Park, New York. Awesome. Uh, all right. Any other questions from anybody about the major or any of the comments that I made? Please, anyone. Nothing. Oh, I see one in the chat, Dr. Smith. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, anything, because my chat window won't open. So you get to answer it, Cosette, because I can't, ooh, you know what, I'm gonna stop the share and maybe that'll help. Okay. Well, Mo Moira, I think, um, asked, what does a normal day look for you as a student? Which I don't think is a question for Dr. Smith. I believe that one's for me. <laughs> um, for me, uh, this semester, all of my classes start at 11, um, but I work before that, so I try to get up um, at like 9, and then I go to work when I have work. I work at the Writing Center, which is an awesome resource here on campus for students to um, just kind of have appointments and go over their papers and talk about, you know, their writing and how to improve. So um, usually I do that before class. Uh, then I go to class, 
um, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are 50 minute classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are 90 minutes. Um, and I don't generally eat lunch, uh, but most people do. <laughs> um, we have a great dining hall. Um, and then usually I have class again. Um, in the afternoons, I either go to a couple of my clubs. Um, I have, I'm involved in a few clubs on campus, including the Historic Preservation Club, which is awesome. If you're interested in historic preservation, that's a great way to meet other students. Um, and uh, other than that, I, I, I spend a lot of time studying. So I'm in the library or the HCC doing homework. And then I usually spend my nights you know, just hanging out in my dorm. COVID has changed this quite a bit. Um, I used to spend a lot more time with friends on campus and now, you know, with COVID, um, we do a lot more things online, but we're hoping that this next semester will be more of a return to what we, we know and love as campus. I hope that helps. Um, you may uh, want to say something too about the, the resources. So uh, the Writing Center is an awesome resource here uh, on campus. We also have a Speaking Center. Um, that uh, is great to help students prepare for presentations. Uh, and we also have the Digital Knowledge Center, um, which helps students with uh, more technical questions. So with software and things like that. And those are all staffed uh, primarily by students. So it's really nice to be helped out by peers, I think in general, um, yeah. And we also have the Digital Knowledge Center. Yeah. Um, which is, did you mention that? And I just completed, yeah, sorry. <laughs> It's fine. Um, it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, uh, classes are usually in person, by the way. So uh, if you uh, if you decide to come to Mary Wash this fall, especially in store preservation, just be be aware. Classes will definitely be in person, and even when we were remote, we tried to have as many in person classes as possible. Um, so especially field classes, because it's it's impossible to learn learn that stuff remotely. So uh, the cemeteries class that. Um, Cosette took, uh, we, we still managed to get some uh, field work, uh, some uh, field uh, visits uh, to go even with COVID, which was really fun. Yeah, a lot I mean, of my classes have employed the hybrid method. Um, I was in our uh, field work and analysis class last fall, and um, we were definitely, even in the midst of COVID, you know, trying to get as much field work um, and time on sites as we could. So. I'm excited to, I'm actually excited for the fall and for the chance to be back in person. Any other questions for Cosette? Nothing else? Okay, well, again, if um, if anything comes up uh, for you guys that, that you would like to have, uh, if you have questions that you'd like answered, please don't hesitate. Um, I already gave you my email, but I'll give it to you one more time. It's almsmith at umw.edu. Um, and uh, thank you, Cosette. And uh, uh, Cosette's uh, email um, is in the, the share box there. Um, so if you have questions for her specifically that you'd like to ask about um, the faculty and that kind of stuff, um, you, you can uh, feel free. I know I said, you know, we're super engaged faculty and, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt, except like for real though, <laughs> it's pretty, we're very tight knit, uh, in this department. Uh, so it's, um, so one of the planners in town, her name is Susanna. So she's, she's an urban planner in town. Uh, she was one of my students, uh, and, uh, her daughter, uh, uh, sleeps in a crib that was my daughter's crib beforehand. Like that's the kind of close I'm talking about here. Um, we're, um, we're definitely uh, very engaged and um, we're all about, you know, community because um, that's what we do. Last, last uh, call for questions. All right, uh, if anything comes up, love to hear from you guys. Uh, and otherwise, I hope I recognize some of your names uh, this fall. And uh, yeah, if you take HISP 100, you have one chance in three of taking it with me. So um, I'll see you then. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>